Hi guys, how you doing? I know this is the last talk and you might, some of you might be tired, so I'm gonna be inter it's gonna be interesting as possible. Dan, thanks for having me here, I'm super grateful. So let's talk about accents. Accents is something that is really interesting. So whenever we think about accents, the first thing that comes to our mind is the impressionists, uh, comedians and doing impressions of various celebrities. Just to name a few, the, the magnificent Robin Williams doing the Irish accent, approachable, non-approachable. Non no one can do the same accent. Uh, Jay Farrow doing the Barack Obama impression, amazing. But have you ever thought of why do we have more than one accent? Why can't we all speak the same accent? And I just look at myself every time I keep watching YouTube videos of breakdown of accents of celebrities and impressions, and then I keep going back to the same question. Why can't we have one unified accent? Why can't we all talk in the same way? But before I answer these questions for you, I need you to do me a favor, all of everyone in this room. Try pronouncing my name the same way that I say it. I will say my name once, and everyone here will take like 10 seconds in order to pronounce it in the same way. So my name is Mustafa. Try pronouncing it. Everyone, I want everyone here to try pronounce it. And then if anyone wants to volunteer and see if they got it the right way or not. Anyone wants to volunteer? You're kind of close. Who else? Who else want to pro Yeah, that's the right way. Yep. Okay, shout out to those who got it right. That's, that's good. And we just want to highlight one specific idea. Everyone here pronounced it in their own way. But just let's take a minute and then ask, think about what do I mean by their own way? Everyone here approached my name in their own way and they started to pronounce it in a different way. What do I mean by a different way? Let me tell you a story. So three years ago, I started doing stand-up comedy as a part of my school club back in Egypt. And at that point, I was doing accents of celebrities and other impressions and gestures, but I didn't know why was I doing this and I haven't thought deeply of why do I have that ability of doing these impressions? But at a certain point, I always come back to myself and ask a similar question, as I said from the beginning. Why does Robin William, what is the thing that Robin William have so special that he approached that accent and then he mastered that accent at the, at the end? So thinking about it from that perspective, psychology, linguistics, and sociology can all give us a really convenient answer, an answer that no one can deny. A research conducted on international students and others who are English and not their first language says that accent might not be essential for your survival. However, approaching a new accent or learning a new language means that you have to be participating in a new culture or taking in something called another linguistic identity. A famous writer named Eva Hoffman referred to this term as seismic, seismic mental shift. What do I mean exactly by seismic mental shift? She elaborates in her book, Lost of Translation, that when you approach a new language or approach a new culture, you're actually getting immersed into the culture of that language or that accent. So you're taking in someone else's identity for a minute or two. So basically we reach a conclusion that an identity is the same as an accent, or in other words, accent affects your identity. Professor Pony Norton from the uh, University of British Columbia in Canada, she elaborates more on that, saying that the accent might affect your identity in a certain way. The accent might affect your identity in a way that it affects how you view yourself in relation to yourself and in relation to others. It defines your possibilities in the future. It defines who you are. It defines how you think. It defines how do you view yourself with respect to others. So we've now reached the conclusion that me doing an impression or anyone else doing an impression is more than just a gesture. It's more, more than just pronouncing letters and words in a different way. So once you get that, you translate an impression to something called a message. So what do I mean again by a message? Keep asking myself a question, why, why, until we reach the origin of the matter. So what is a message? What do I mean by a ma an, an, doing an impression is delivering a message? It's simply a verbal combination of, non of, of, uh, of certain communication channels that I'm trying to deliver something to you. In other words, I would try to phrase it as, how do I like each and every one in this room to perceive me? Why do I want you to think when I'm doing a certain impression? Once you think about it that way, it becomes easier to do an impression. That's how Robin Williams do it. That's how Jay Farrow do it, does it. Everyone does it that way. So think about it from that perspective. We reach a conclusion that in order to capture the essence of a particular accent, you have to go a step further. You have to understand what is the culture of that accent. You have to understand what is the origin of that accent to understand how, wh how and why do we pronounce certain letters and words in that same way. So at a certain point when you go through learning a new, a new accent and learning something more about the origin of that accent, it becomes a part of your identity. You take that part and learn from it. And how do you learn from it? Maybe the way you think, the things you believe in, they all change as you go, as this identity, as you take on that new linguistic identity. 
So the, may, the way you sometimes pronounce some letters, the way you sometimes fail to pronounce other letters, they all tell a part of a story. It's your story. So let me tell you mine and how I got my accent. So as the, the, the earliest memory that I have as a seven-year-old was me going in a, in a trip to, in, to Petra City with my father in Jordan. And it was a really magnificent trip. My dad worked for th more than 13 years as a tour guide for Italian tourists who were coming to Jordan. He used to make these trips all the time. But when I was old enough, he said, you have to come with me. It's an amazing opportunity. At that certain point, it was my first time ever being exposed to a new culture or a new language. It was my first time ever listening to people speak in Italian or Spanish. And I was always asking my dad, why do they speak this that way? Even when they try to speak in English, I was also misunderstanding a lot of the things they say. So I was asking my dad, why can't they speak the same way that my teacher, my English teacher speak? And then, of course, he didn't know the answer. But I ended up that week spending most of my time with, with Italian businessmen. And I came to learn more about their culture, more about who they are, what they do, what they like. I came to learn how to greet people in Italian. I came to learn more stuff in Italian. I came to learn as well how to introduce myself in Italian. And at the end, I came up with that experience that translate, I translated into a message that every time I do my Italian expression, everyone gets what I want to see, what I want to say. Everyone thinks exactly how I want, how I want them to think. So just re go back to the definition or the conclusion that we got from what I've said, that an accent defines who you are. The accent defines your identity. I got that experience of beginning immersed into a particular uh, culture. Even for a week, it's not that intensive. But I captured in that week, how do they feel? Why do they feel that same way? How do they dress? What do they eat? Why do they eat that thing? How, how do they want to be perceived by the society? And I translated all of that into what, what, what I call my Italian identity or my Italian part of my identity. However, this is, was not my last interaction with, uh, with a culture at all or any accent. There was actually a really funny story that I learned more, that I understood more what Professor uh, Hoffman said after that. When I came back, when I, I, went, I, I left Egypt when I was three or four months, and then we went to Jordan to live there for more than seven years because of my father's work as a tour guide. So during our stay there, my dad decided permanently that we have to go back to Egypt, finally. So we went back to Egypt. I started, of course, I speak the Egyptian dialect and the Jordanian dialect on my daily basis. But people started to notice that there's differences about the stuff that I pronounce. Sometimes I would just elongate a specific vowel. Sometimes I wouldn't know what, is a, what a slang does or what do people want to say. Sometimes I wouldn't know what to reply to a specific thing. It was kind of weird at the beginning. So some, at, at, at that certain point, I just look at myself back and think, why do I still saturate my ease? Why, for example, do I say le instead of leish when I say why? And at that certain point also, why do I refer to chicken as the dajj instead of frakh, which is something that is super weird for an Egyptian to do? And also, remarkably, I know how to pronounce the za, which is really easy for everyone to pronounce here in the room. But for an Egyptian, it's super hard. When you try pronouncing the za, they always come up as za. We don't have that in our dictionary. So I come back to the definition of what I, what I said about the interpretation of Professor Eva Hoffman and Professor, uh, Professor Boney Norton. They said that, it, that an accent is a an, is an display of someone's membership toward, us, toward a specific speech group or community. When I went back to Egypt and I started talking to people and they started to notice these differences, I didn't feel that I was communicating with them. I felt always detached from the society that I was, I was living in. And fortunately, until that accent faded away, I started to reconnect with who I am, my, my, my Egyptian identity, the person who, was, uh, who I am supposed to be if I was in Egypt. I would like to think about this experience as connecting with my old heritage, my Egyptian persona. And, but that doesn't mean that I lost my Jordanian and Egyptian mixture. I still have that, and I can switch between them like this. But the thing is that I reconnected with who I am. What does ac that accent mean? What every slang that people in Egypt used, why do we say frakh instead of the judge? Why do we say this instead of that? I reconnected with everything. Then I translated that to come back to, to what is it called the original Egyptian dialect. So looking at the person in front of you, standing in front of you right now, without all of these imperfections, without all of these exposures, I wouldn't have had that opportunity to get all of these pieces into one identity. I wouldn't have had the chance to grow more and become better. So eventually, the ways that I pronounce my R's, the ways that I pronounce my E's, the way that remarkably I can pronounce the the, they all tell a part of a story. It's my story. So let me hear your accent, and let me hear your story. Thank you so much for listening.
Thank you.